All right, let's go then. All right. This is Browsy Acres. This is our aviary sanctuary, where we, right now, it's a bunch of chickens and ducks. So, so are you doing the whole eggs thing? Yeah, actually. You want to pick some up right now? Sure. We don't have any, what, do you have anything to put them in? Where I was at, I, was, I went to make breakfast for my girl this morning, and I was like, oh, we don't have eggs. Dude, they're so <laughs> easy to take care of. Like, you only really need to change their food and water every couple of days. Like, we come down here every day to spoil the shit out of them, but, like, they're super low maintenance, which I think is why they end up being, like, abused so badly is because they're so tough. Like, it's over, like, 110 degrees out here, and they're, like, fine. But I'll, like, throw out, like, uh, I, like, freeze watermelon chunks and throw them out here for them uh -huh. to, like, kind of cool down. But, yeah, like, they're the toughest animal. I mean, they're little dinosaurs. It's crazy. Do you have any roosters, or is it all just hens? We got two roosters. Oh, hi, B. Move it. Um, we have two roosters, uh, Junior and Dunlop. Watch your head. Uh -huh. This is, like... I, it's such a bummer my girl's working today because uh -huh. this is like our dream come true. No, what well, was another one of dreams yours, right? Was the cauliflower ear? <laughs> oh, I missed! Oh, <laughs> he ducked! I should have said it! <laughs> you have to keep it going. Okay. I can have it. All right. Ah. Ah. I'll get you again later. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted one surprise. He told me. <laughs> right. Good. Good. Yeah, I should have said it because he ducked. Uh, yeah. Well, help me out with these. Oh, Hailey. She's laying right now. This is one of the babies that we hatched, actually. <laughs> there we go. Good. Wow. So, so they, they're very deliberate about where they uh, lay them. I know. She's very offended that I got her up right now. Okay. But do uh, you want to grab them? Or sure. Or what can we put them in right now? Yeah. We'll just give you, let, let you give them like some scratch right now. That's super cool. So just grab this. And you called it scratch? Oh, oh. this is like snacks for them. Yeah, just throw yeah, warm, it out. It's warm meal, huh? Yeah, we just throw them all around. All right. We'll actually throw some in the pond for the ducks because they love it. That's what we call Darwin Pond because we've had like maybe 12 chickens drown in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We just kind of spread these out all over. You want to follow me? Chickens around? drown? Yeah, they get like waterlogged, their feathers. That's uh, Annabella and baby Bobolini is around here. So this one, Dusty, actually hatched her own eggs on her own for the first time this year. So okay. we used to put them in like the incubator. Uh huh. And she was just like, she got uh, what's called broody. And we had one chicken go broody before. And we finally got some like fertilized eggs under her and then she drowned in the pond while I was like off on the South America tour. When you say hatch, that's like giving birth, right? Like the chicken comes, so, so you're breeding chickens too. Yeah, basically. But um, I mean, cause we got, um, speaking of apocalypse stuff, we're like big time doomsday preppers, at least I am. Uh -huh. I have more into survivalist stuff, but um, we got an outbreak of Newcastle disease in this area. So we haven't been able to buy new birds for like two years. Uh -huh. So we didn't have to like breed them our own. So their dad, that's Dunlop because his comb Dunlopped over. And that's okay. Junior. <laughs> Chav named him. <laughs> but we're good the eggs. And so um, we brought a bunch from him. You want to put the eggs in there? Sure. And let's check the side. See if they put any. Nah. They have like their favorite spots. So you uh, definitely get more eggs out of all this than you need. Oh yeah, we end up getting like a crazy amount and like, you know, um, giving them a lot of them away. Mm -hmm. But they're super low maintenance. We give them like our table scraps. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got a couple of them It's a large here. egg. That's, these eggs are very large. Like bigger than uh, you get at the store. Well, some of these, like these are all duck eggs and the other smaller ones are chicken eggs. Okay, so do we not want to mix them? No, we can. Put them in there. And uh, do you eat duck eggs too? Mm hmm. They got like a bigger yolk and they're like a lot richer than the chicken egg. But they have like a thicker membrane too, so you have to like crack the shit out of them when you crack them. Okay. Would you like to meet the goats? Yes, please. Okay, this is Max, Clay, Pax. That's Kudu. That's Millie right there, who's the star. She's number one. She's not a goat. Right. 
And uh, so I think my goat is somewhere. What? She's a guard donkey. A guard donkey. I love yeah, it. <laughs> she's a livestock guardian. So she guards the goats. Hey. That's Clay. So these guys are part of our apocalypse plan. They're pack goats. Uh -huh. So you can put like 30, 40 pounds on them and they'll follow you over any kind of terrain. Okay. And they're all bottle fed. So they're imprinted on humans and they'll literally just wherever you want to go, they just want to follow you. Hi, baby. This is Max. He's king dingling hot shit around here. Huh? <laughs> he used to have his balls when he got here. So he's always pissing all over his face and stunk, but <laughs> Now he's kind of calmed down. How does a goat piss on its face? Uh, well, it goes down the middle and like pisses all over its own face and then makes this like, ooh, that smelled so good. Um, but they would do it sometimes. Our neighbor goats would um, go into heat and they would get all rowdy and start pissing on themselves. But usually they're good. And how many goats are there total? There's six goats. Okay. Yeah. So. Like Trav, like the idea that Trav got him for like hunting, so he would like put all of like uh, his like like tents and everything mm -hmm. on him. The, my, I'm more is for for me. It's like the like contingency plan. If we need to get the hell out of LA, we can like load all our stuff on the goats and then we get out of here, and they can like carry all of our stuff for us. And Millie too. She's a big strong bitch over here. I love it. Yeah, get I, love, I love the doomsday prepper angle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is Kudu, our little smallest, youngest one. And this is my sweet ass. Millie. And Millie. She's the guardian. She's a mammoth Jenny. And um, she, like, attacks things that fuck with the goats. Uh-huh. So, like, we had my sister's dog got back here and was chasing the goats. And she literally was chasing down the dog, like, kicking at it. Like, <laughs> these are her goats. And, um... We actually had a coyote outside the hen house the other day, and I ran down to like chase it off, and she was right in front of the goat's pen, like guarding the goats. And yeah, she's our little coyote killer over here. Our she actually killed a coyote? She would. No. She's yeah, chased she after yet. dogs and stuff like that, but she's like our, our silent sentinel. Did you see the. Uh documentary my biggest or the biggest little farm yes oh my god i'm obsessed yeah. with them cool. i actually yeah. got him a bunch of like apricot lane like shirts and stuff for oh, christmas nice. yeah. yeah mr greasy we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna talk to the um was he a biodynamic farmer he okay. helped he helped develop the biggest little farm yeah because we're looking at doing like a garden and some stuff here as much as we can and um we want to get some acreage just probably outside of LA, probably up north where it's a little bit cheaper and do something like that, a biodiverse, uh -huh. biodynamic, yeah. all organic kind of like a farm, just like what they did. Sure. But yeah. Yeah, we're, we're looking at this property in Gorman, 70 acres. Uh -huh. and, uh, there's two houses on it, it's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, we watched that, that documentary and like I went right on Amazon and got a compost maker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to make compost tea so bad. Composting. There's a we have the all the goats got to the cardboard and they tore it apart, uh -huh. but it's up there in a pile. I have to put it together still. Yeah. So nice. We have a compost yeah. pile which Porter loves to roll in. Yeah. All right, I go see Porter. <laughs> so Porter is a wagyu steer. Uh -huh. We actually, we just had our first year, we just harvested our first year and it was really, really tough. We raised them and loved them and fed them and everything for a year. And, um, you, you know, my harvested of your first deer steer steer. Oh, gotcha. Cause you know, I, I tried being vegan for like eight months and uh -huh. I didn't do it right. And I got bronchitis and you know, it was just not the lifestyle yeah. my family wants to live. So yeah, I get if it. we want to have be able to you know eat meat we want to do it as ethically and sustainably sure. as possible so what's important to us is that he has a life worth living sure. and we try we try to be the ones that suffer so he doesn't have to so he's literally the king of riverside nice and gets all the loves and massages every day yeah i mean shoot i i stopped being vegan uh 
man, a few years back. Like, I, but I, I just eat fish. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, I, I happen to think is good for me, but I don't, you know, I don't have any judgment over anybody eating meat. Well, I think factory farming is a real, a real shame. Yeah. I think, uh, like, all the chemicals and the, you know, hormones, the antibiotics, all, the, all that's a bunch of bullshit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, fuck, man, you know. Well, we're the same way. We're, like, you know, we're really against industrial farming. Um, and we just want to be able to respect the animal. Sure. And so, like, this is the way that we found to do it. And we, we, when we first harvested Kobe, who was um, Porter's uncle, actually, um, we were bawling our eyes out. You know, we all of our family had taken care of him over that year. And we really said, we're like, man, we're never going to do this again. We can't ever do this again. And then we had to take the skirt steak off of him because we were going to age the rest of it. And we had the first bite that night, and it was like, like I wanted to cry because I had never had meat like that before. And it literally like tasted like gratitude, like in uh -huh. the most fucked up way. Like we were like, oh my god, we have to do it. We have to get another one because like you could taste that he was loved and happy, and like I that was his it. way to give back. And so the wagyu has um, it's only red meat in the world with monounsaturated fat. And it has more omega threes and six in it than salmon does. Uh -huh. And um, the melting, like temperature for the fat, is actually lower than your body temperature, so it literally melts in your mouth. Wow! And so it's, um, and I think Kobe was graded A three plus for marbling and tenderness, and so he gets to have the most lax, amazing life. These cows are usually hung in hammocks, or they're kept in a an area pretty much is only as big as they can stand or lay down. What do you mean by hung in a hammock? Like veal, like they hang them in a hammock. Oh God. And so he gets this space for his uh -huh. pen and then we also let him out at night. So he gets the whole run of Bowsy Acres at night because Millie does not like him. Um, <laughs> <Millie's> <laughs> she gorgeous. gave a face like, fuck that guy. <laughs> but Millie doesn't like him. So we have to keep him separate. So he gets probably the best life of any Wagyu in the world. Uh -huh. And we would like you to come and meet him. Cool. It's an interesting idea that, like, I've always thought if people want to eat meat, maybe they shouldn't have to get a license to do so. And to get your license, you should have to actually, like, slaughter an animal. Well, I think you're, you're right. People should take emotional responsibility for how they choose to live their life. And, right. Like, I don't want to turn a blind eye so and let him suffer. Right. You know, I would rather... Like when we harvested Kobe, we did it here. It was actually, you want to tell it, Trev, because you're the one that yeah. had to do it. Yeah, I mean, he's actually right there. And just like any other day, I called him up, you know, and he just came up licking my hand, what's up, dad, all that kind of stuff. And I shot him in the head with 22. Which? And he was done. Like yeah. he was dead right away. So he sure. went from eating, happy, right. all that kind of stuff to being dead. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. it wasn't like we didn't put them in a trailer, ship them somewhere, all the stress sure. and hormones and all that kind of stuff. But it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Like I was, we were crying so hard and so much and Man, for such a long time. But I've I mean, been so, I've been so back and forth and all over the place with how I feel about, you know, animal rights stuff. And I think where I'm at a place now now like i just I, like i have cats i've got you know i'm not gonna make my my animals vegetarian you no. know if they're not mm -hmm. supposed to be vegetarian yeah i i actually believe eating meat in some way is uh is really natural and healthy mm -hmm. uh but then i want to be like the bleeding heart compassionate veggie guy so I, I honestly don't know what I think. But I'm, but. but I'm telling you, so so I'm a hunter. I do a lot of bow hunting and stuff like <laughs> that. And like you were saying, you feel like if you want to eat meat, you should have to go and kill it yourself. Sure. Because there's nothing like getting, I have to get within 20 to 50 yards of a wild animal, you know, and then, and then draw back and shoot it and then harvest it. And then I'm dragging it out of the mountains for miles and miles and miles making multiple trips like i literally have sure. blood sweat and tears into the meat that we eat on this in this right. house 
And for I, have, I have way more respect for that than yeah. people who don't want to know. Exactly, right? And that's and that's my thing is like you you should have to go through that because it's not easy. I don't right. enjoy killing shit. Sure. Like you're saying, having a bleeding heart. Like I <clears> love <throat> animals, and I. I do not like killing them. I love the hunt. I hate killing them. I get emotional. I love this guy. I'm going to have to shoot him, but I choose <laughs> to eat meat. Right. Like, you look at the rest of our animals that we don't purchase to eat, they are the most spoiled animals you'll ever meet. Well, yeah, plus so is he. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and we He's get down to spoiled. it. I think... Uh, I honestly think dying is the easiest thing, man. You know, like we make such a big deal out of it, but it's living that's hard. Yeah. And you give them a good life and then all of a sudden, yeah. plus no suffering, there's a lot to be yeah. said for that. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to put them through like the stress of transport or like a slaughterhouse or everything. So we literally try to do everything ourselves. So he just has a great life until it's it's over. But yeah, you know, and we're it's not like, trying to be controversial or sure. Or, trying to tell anybody that they're right or wrong this is how we choose to love our life to live our life and we just try to put the most into it so we get the most out of it you know sure. what I mean? we love these animals we take care of these animals and in return they they pay us back i don't think that you guys need to make any you know excuses or explanations yeah. or anything i completely respect what you're doing yeah, yeah. thank you oh, yeah. thank you I, I don't think of it as excuses i think of it as trying to like spread awareness that like sure. turning a blind eye is not yeah. like the most ethical thing to do in, in our opinion you know and we right. want our kids want to eat meat and we want them to eat the best meat in the world which is you let me that guy would be 50 dollars an ounce anywhere and um you know, and we want it to be from an animal that wasn't hung in a hammock and suffering its whole life, but happy and loved. Yeah. And we want our kids to have that connection and sure. that awareness and to be aware of what it means, you know? So like, there's nothing ever wasted in this house. You know, there's, yep. we learned that. to compost because my dog ate a trout off the counter and I was gonna give her a carp, but I, that, the carp went bad. And then I was like, I made the decision to kill this carp. Like it can't be for no reason. I need to learn how to recycle it. And that's what led to composting and gardening but and you everything can't else. put meat in compost right well bukashi composting actually can so it's a type uh, okay. of fermentation which i never would have learned that if i didn't feel responsibility for a part <laughs> you know that's great so, all right so back up let's let him eat porter wow he's just a baby <laughs> <laughs> he is so he's about a year old right now <clears throat> wow and we got um 730 pounds of meat off of his uncle 730 pounds and you said 50 bucks an ounce yeah for the good cut so right. um that'll probably last our whole fa our whole family for like a year one cow will last the whole family for a year yeah so he's like the highest quality cow meat you can get in the world and we put what five grand into him yeah. about five or six, six from like buying him and feeding him and everything it was only six grand but yeah. when you're when you're home you do it all yourself yeah, it's usually like very minimum. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's probably like forty-five minutes in the morning and forty-five minutes at night. Uh huh. Yeah, like, but we like to spend more time with them too. So that's like just to feed them in the morning. And, and to, to do day. to do all of this, like for all these animals, forty-five minutes in the morning, forty-five minutes at night, does the trick. Yeah. It's crazy. And so we usually split it up so Trav gets the, takes care of the guys with the hooves and I get the birds. Uh -huh. Are you in the like sustainability and stuff like that? I mean, sure. I'm pretty ignorant in general, but uh, Well, just because yeah. you're talking about animal sanctuary and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. We put the new Tesla tiles on our on our uh, roof. The solar panels? The solar <laughs> roof. That's, that's a Tesla tile roof right there. Oh, shit. Yeah. We're doing that's... like a million homes a week. Yeah. Right. <coughs> yeah. yeah, and we just got water catchment put in as well. Yeah, we. So how many watts catchment. is that? Um, I don't. It. it I'm honestly, right. I don't know like the exact numbers, but, but it's like generally enough to just keep everything running. Oh, he's, we actually get paid from the power company. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not very much. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we're so killing it. Yeah, but we're not paying. Yeah. Right. Like right. in the in the gnarly time of the year, either during the summer which is the gnarliest you know it's like 100 yeah. degrees out here um i think we ended up paying like 30 bucks where normally it was like 700 you wow. know what i mean mm -hmm. for like ac and stuff 
during peak hours. And it looks great. Yeah. It looks like a normal roof. You yeah. Know? It's not like the big ugly panels that uh -huh. sit everywhere. So. I mean, it's how it always makes you feel good to see the big ugly panels, but. <laughs> <laughs>